with Herman and Sharon. Hey, this is it, Sharon. Can I help you down the stairs? <laughs> Yeah, you said you're yeah, suffering a little bit of a hangover today. I, I know. I said, <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I haven't had a drop we to drink. Came out of the house here, yeah, except water. <laughs> yeah. I was just having prayer with uh, our director David, and I said, David, have you ever had a hangover? And he goes, No, I don't believe. I said, Well, years he ago, wouldn't tell you if he I did. said, Well, years ago, I, I know what a hangover feels like. I said, But I have not been drinking. But this morning, I have that feeling that I've had a hangover so yeah. I feel like in, fact, in fact coming out I told her I said what you ought to do is when I step out there you just smack me across the face <laughs> my glasses kind of hang on they go boy what was well, that for our guest today she's going to bring you out of your hangover I know it. To get you feeling really good again it's guide your mind mm -hmm. guard your heart and grace your tongue she is a well-known yes. popular speaker carol burton mclead here she comes <laughs> and she has beautiful shoes on <laughs> thank you Herman. i'm going to i'm going to hold your chair for oh, you. oh wow yeah, a gentleman okay. too huh? yes, yes absolutely. thank you for having and me and i'll do this for yeah, sharon because oh, yeah. yes right look at here. that there we go they don't make them like they used no. to huh <laughs> yeah good to have you thanks herman it's so good to see you all yeah, again and to, you to be with you today how many books have you written uh this is my ninth one my tenth one's coming out in march now do you just like flying on an airplane, sitting in your chair in the home, driving, do these ideas come to you? Or you hear somebody on TV? Or you hear a comment? Well, no, I study people and I study the word. And those two things together help me come up with ideas. Because I want to write to people's needs. Sure. I want to write to where people actually need some help. And so I'm a great observer of people's lives, whether I'm in the airport or at church or at a ball game. I watch particularly what women go through, and right. I try to write to a felt need. Well, I, I, I just mm -hmm. I made a copy of the uh, chapters. Actually, yes. it, has a, it has three parts, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Part one, guard your mind. Right. Or uh, guide. Guide your guide mind. Your mind. And guard your mind too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, doing both. I was, I was reading about that. Guard your heart. You know that verse. Uh -huh. that, yes. In fact, you mentioned that in yeah. the, in yeah. the bo book. Uh -huh. Great book, by the way. You need to get a copy because we're just going to kind of give you uh, ideas as mm -hmm. we go through the book. Chapters I picked out that I that I've read and I I really love. And for example, one chapter: a brand new brain which is what I need today. I, <laughs> we'll work on it. <laughs> you are not your problem. <laughs> yes, you're not. And uh, Mr. Deceit. Mm, that's a good chapter. Oh, my goodness, yes, yes. yes. And you know what, what is amazing? And I've just done this, I think, in the last couple of years. I have this, I mean, you know Satan has put that in your mind. Right. Because it's not what God would ever do. Right. And I, I've, I've just stopped when that happens. I say, Satan, get behind me. Mm -hmm. Because I know that thought or whatever it is, is not from him. Right. And that's taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That's, that's saying, right. nope. Yeah. You, you know, it's not a sin to have a random thought like that. The sin comes when you let it stay. Absolutely. So we've got to recognize it as not God honoring. Yeah no fruitfulness in it and get rid of it. Second Corinthians, casting down imagination. Right, right, right. And then it, it gets your trash out of my mind. And that's basically what I'm saying. Yeah. Get out of here. That's right. Get that garbage out of my mind. And worth the fight. Have you made up your mind? Practice makes perfect. And then part two, guard your heart. That's, that's the one that I... I because that is so important. It is. Because, and and, and you go into, because we're only going to topically cover this, but you go into what that means. Right. And then after every chapter, you kind of have a review. I do. Questions to ask yeah. mm -hmm, for Sunday school class, a book club, personal devotions, just so the information seeps inside of you. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so important. But anyway, great book. Great writer. Thanks, Herman. And you've done this before. Yeah. I have, a time and, or two. And, and, and see my picture. I told her when she, I met her in the green room. I said, 
you're the one of the few people that look like the picture. <laughs> I mean, she looks just like the picture. <laughs> so, so it must be recent. But, okay, w what created this desire for this book? Because you, you have to have a yeah. burning desire. Anything we do in life, this thing captivates you and you got, I got to put it down because right. somebody needs this because I needed it. Right. You know, I knew there were a lot of books that have been written about the power of your tongue. I knew there had been books written about your mind, about your emotions, but I didn't know of a book that tackled all three of the things. And as I observed people's lives, there's not one person alive on the face of the planet who doesn't wish they could press rewind wow. and take back a boatload of things they've said to their spouse, yes. to their kids. Yes. On Facebook, on social media, you oh, think we don't problem. have a communication problem? Oh, my Spend goodness. 10 seconds yeah, on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. We have a problem. But this is the deal, Herman. Your tongue is really not your problem because your tongue is just a puppet on a string. Mm -hmm. Your tongue is only going to say what your mind and your heart tell it to say. So I had to go back to the beginning in Scripture. The book is filled with Scripture. Our first issue is... is um, guiding our minds into all truth. For all three areas, your mind, your heart, and your tongue, I have an anchor scripture. And Proverbs 23, seven says, as a man or a woman thinks within themselves, so is he. What, you know, this is not new age. This is Bible. The thoughts we think today become the life we live tomorrow. If you think angry, critical thoughts today, that's the you you're going to have tomorrow. So you've got to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Now, when you do speaking engagements, right? I'm just talking personally, right? I've had things come into my mind. I'm going, I, I do not want to think that. Do you have that where you're about ready to speak and all of a sudden, bam, and it's, it's almost like either this is going to be the best time I've ever had and lives are gonna be transformed or I'm gonna have a problem. I think everybody goes through that. I think when moms wake up in the morning, terrible thoughts cross their minds. Yeah. I think when men go to work, I, I think when, when pastors pastor and speakers speak and doctors heal, we all yeah. have yeah. the same yeah mental problem. We, we can beat ourselves up mentally, that's yeah. a bad thought. We can think the wrong things. So whatever season of life you're in, teenagers, young yeah. adults have this problem. Whatever season in life you're in, this is what I want to say. God gave you a brain for a specific reason and it wasn't to agree with the enemy. Your, your, your mind was never meant to be a receptacle for fear and worry and bitterness. God gave you a mind, are you ready for this? To think his thoughts. That's why we have a mind, yeah. is to get downloads from heaven, from the word of God, and let those things stay in all the crevices of our minds. And there are many people that never open the word except in church. Right. Yeah, I say to people all the time, listen, if you've got a, a brain problem, you've got a Bible problem. Yeah. You haven't spent time opening the Word of God because the Word is a cleansing agent. And, you know, I, I'm a Word girl. I love the Bible. And when I teach and speak, I always say, listen, we don't read the Word primarily for information. We read it for transformation. So if you can't understand the Bible, that's okay read it anyway because it's doing a greater work inside of you and I mean I dare you to read the Bible for 21 days straight see what it does to your thought processes yeah. see how it changes the person you are yeah, yeah. but you, you can start in any book in the Bible I mean really every book has a message for you and something you get out of that book it's Old so Testament, true New Testament it's so true. Um, you know, if you're a young believer, if you've never read the Word before, I always recommend start in Psalms mm -hmm. and in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Absolutely. and John. Um, and just linger there and let the truth of God's Word do an inner healing work in you. This comes Amen. out of your book. <clears throat> Satan can't read your mind. Right. He observes your life. Right. So this is what we believe in evangelical Protestant theology 
that the, the enemy cannot read your mind. Only God is omniscient. Mm -hmm. Only God knows everything that's everything. going on. But what the enemy does is he does try to put thoughts in your brain, just like you've pointed out. He doesn't know if they've lingered there or not. He doesn't know if he's got you or not until he hears what you say and sees you do what you do. And then he knows if he's got you. Mm -hmm. And so that's the battle that even as believers we face is to take every thought captive so that our lives are a reflection of our dad. So even after you're born again, yes. you're a believer, you still has, have this daily walk that you have to do, daily battle that you have to do. Yeah, you have to choose to allow Jesus to be Lord of your life yeah. every, day, every day, which includes your thought life, mm -hmm. your emotions, and your tongue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mr. Deceit, that's, that's a chapter, and it's a great chapter, talking about Satan, lies affect your eyes. Right. You know, so I, I looked at Eve in, in Genesis 1, 2, and 3, and, and the battle that she went through with the enemy, because he is so stupid, and he hasn't changed his tactics yeah. in the thousands of years since the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. All he's got are lies. That's all he's got. That's right, lies. All power and authority belongs to Jesus. So what the enemy does is he pr prowls about like a roaring lion. He's not one, uh -uh. but he's just a kitty cat who thinks he can roar. And he lies to us, just like he lied to, to Eve. And so when the enemy lied to Eve in the Garden of e Eden, all of a sudden she looked at the fruit and saw that it looked good. And so if we listen to the lies of the enemy, it's going to impact what we desire and what, how we see things in life. You know, if we're listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, we're gonna see that new dress that costs $400, and we're gonna say, it's okay, I don't need to go into debt for that dress. But if we're li listening to the lies of the enemy, and let me just say, that $400 dress is three sizes too small, <laughs> but you think you want it, because I'm gonna fit in it yeah. someday. Yeah. I'm you gonna know, hang it there. I'm gonna hang it there, yeah, and, and drool over yeah. it. And, and so, if you're listening to the lies of the enemy, you know, it, it affects what you desire uh -huh. in life. So we must listen to the truth. Isn't it amazing how it's true. Jesus was sent into the desert by the Holy Spirit for a 40 day fast. Satan meets him and wants to tempt him to join him in his plantation. Take a look at, what you, and we can do this together. And I'm thinking to myself, now wouldn't you think, that's, that's why he's stupid, wouldn't you think he would know that he's messing with God's son? Right. He created all of this. You're going to give him an offer to join you. Wow. How stupid yeah. can one entity be? Yeah. How stupid. Yeah. He was dealing with the son of God, and but we have to remember how Jesus responded with it is written. Yes. Yeah. He responded with yeah. the word. Yeah. Another reason why we need to get the word in us is so when the enemy comes to us, we can respond with the word of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And obviously Satan didn't believe anything he was saying because he takes him to the highest pinnacle. Right. Cast yourself down. If you're really God's son, you mm -hmm. can't mm -hmm. die on this. And, and again, tempting, te that's what he does to us. That's he what does. your book points out. He does. Mm -hmm. Right, Constantly. and if, if he did it with Jesus, he's certainly going to try yeah. it with us. Absolutely. Certainly. Absolutely. Uh, you, you talk about Satan's lies changes your desires. It does, because she began to desire yeah. that which was forbidden to her. Now, isn't that interesting? Everything was available. Right. But that. Right. Yeah. And that. They had plenty of food. Is mm -hmm. what she wanted. That was what she wanted, because she listened to the lie. She didn't want it, as far as we know, until she listened to the lie. So it's so important, as you started out the interview yeah. with, to take every thought captive. Yeah, wow. And when he lies to us, to take it captive, to put it under the authority of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And then you'll desire what he desires. Because the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. You know, when I was a young Christian, I used to think that that meant, ooh, I'm gonna get a Cadillac or a trip to Hawaii, you know. But no, 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 no. When you delight yourself in the Lord and who he is, he actually gives you desires. What does that feel like, that delight you're talking about? 
Good question. Let's make it practical. For me, what delighting myself in the Lord means, I don't have to read my Bible. I get to read my Bible. I don't have to worship, I get to worship Him. I, I spend time every day in worship, just adoring Him, just listening for His voice and, and devouring the Word of God. It means going to my dad and asking him for stuff, mm -hmm. asking him for desires of my heart, asking him to go after this child, asking him for provision in this area and then listening what he has to say. You know, it's not rocket science. Yeah. That's what I always say about being a Christian. It's not rocket science. If mm -hmm. I can do it, anybody can do it. When the answers don't come the way you've asked, how do you handle it? Well, when you're delighting yourself in him, what you really want is him more than a specific answer. And you know, really Herman, when, when we go to the Lord with a desire, for me, I'm laying it as, at his feet. I'm asking, but I'm laying it on the altar. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, whatever you want, not what I want. Yes. That's what delighting yourself in the Lord is. Yeah. And and so so we can ask, but Jesus, really, whatever you want is good with me. Mm -hmm. Whatever you think That's best is good for me. That's hard though when you're fighting maybe breast cancer or something like that. Yeah. And, and maybe you're not getting the answer that you've been praying and praying yeah. to the Lord about. So, uh, did you know I just came through a horrific battle with cancer? You did? Uh-huh. Um, wow. I was diagnosed about four years ago, and, and Sharon, this is what it looks like. So, I was diagnosed right before Thanksgiving, had a surgery in December, I almost died because they couldn't stop the bleeding, and I was going into the doctors. It was the week between Christmas and New Year's, wow. and I didn't realize it, but I was about to get bad news. But every time I went to a doctor's office, I'd say, Lord, who do you want me to sit beside? And I felt led to sit beside this one woman, no hair, gray complexion. And I said, how are you doing? And she said, not very well. And I said, you're not, why not? And she looked at me like I was the stupidest person on the face of the planet. And she said, because I'm dying. And she said it just like that. Wow. And the Holy Spirit gave me the words to say, and I said, you know, none of us gets out of here alive. And I began to just share with her the truth and hope and joy that I had in Christ. And I knew one of us was gonna get called in pretty quickly. So I said to her, Martha, can I pray for you before we go in? And she started gut heaving sobbing. And she said, Carol, I've had cancer for seven years and you are the first person who's ever said, can I pray for you? And I thought, what, where are we? Where are we? Mm -hmm. So for me, delighting myself in the Lord and having to walk that horrific journey, it was making the most of every opportunity. It was taking his joy and peace and presence everywhere I went and I was good with that. And you know, ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to go to dark places. I, I thought I was gonna go to the Amazon River or something. But one of the things God's called, called me to do, it's over now, was spend two years in cancer treatment centers. What a dark place. Yes, yes really. Gracious. What an honor to take his joy and his light there. Mm. Now, I never want to do it again, yeah. but <laughs> yes. it was an honor. When you got the news mm -hmm. after being examined, mm -hmm. how did you handle that? Well, my husband was with me and we both cried and we got into our car and we turned worship music on and we prayed mm -hmm. and we we knew the Lord's promise to me okay so I am a word girl and I, after I was diagnosed in November the third day I said to the Lord I'm, I'm gonna do this I am a warrior I am a champion I, I'm gonna do this but I need a scripture I, I need a word and that day in my quiet time you were saying God can speak I was in Nahum most people don't even know no. Nahum is in the Bible, yeah, exactly right? Yeah. Exactly I know. right. And the very last verse of Nahum 1, I looked at my little plan, this is where I'm gonna read, says, and the wicked one will never pass your way again. He is cut off completely. So, wow. when I would get bad news, I'd say, but but the wicked one's never gonna pass my way again. Yes, He's yes. cut off. When, when I had to have all these surgeries and have my body parts cut off, but the wicked one's never gonna pass my way again. Mm -hmm. You gotta give the Holy Spirit something to work with. 
So spend time in the Word. Yes. Amen. 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 Yeah, it, this is part That's two. So good. And when you get your book, yeah. this is the area, uh, chapter eight, a heart transplant. Hmm. And you talk about his perfect heart. Uh, Hebrews 4.23, above all else, guard your heart for it affects everything you do. Wow. I know. Isn't that a wow yes, scripture? It, it is. is. So the Holy Spirit has given us a job description. And this is your job description as you go through life. Guard your heart because it's going to change everything about your life. Now he doesn't mean this beating thing in your chest. No, no. He means your soul. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so generally in the Greek and in the Hebrew, when it talks about heart, it's L-E-B, leb in the Hebrew, right. and, and it means your soul, which is your conscious, your, your seat of desires, the your appetite, you. yes. your emotions. Mm -hmm. Guard it. D don't let it run wild yeah. mm -hmm. because it's going to determine everything about your life. That's right. This is the problem, though. Your heart doesn't want to be guarded. Oh, no. yes. It wants to express <laughs> because itself. Because it's, it's a natural thing. Yes. The, we got this natural thing going on. And we have to work on guarding that we with do. the Word. Yes. And contrary to what Oprah and other New Age gurus say, we don't get to say everything we think, feel, and believe. It's not in the Word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not there. What's in the Word is to guard your heart. That means to give it boundaries. That's right. And when you see your heart getting too close to the boundary, bring it back in. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love if I can get there quick enough. It's <laughs> we don't want dead air, but but we got it right now going on. I, I love this. It says, and it's amazing to me. And I highlighted it. Okay. Scientists tell us right. that our emotions travel eighty thousand times faster than our thoughts travel. I know it. So did that blow your mind? No, he just yes. couldn't believe that. I know. And when I wrote that in my book, my publisher called me and said, Carol, are you sure? Where did you get the first this thing from? I, yeah, <laughs> I the first thing I thought. <laughs> yeah, so I had to prove it to her that it really was a scientific fact, a, a psychological research. Um, can you, can you research. imagine? It's no wonder we go whacked because right. our emotions. Right, because we don't live by the principles we've set in our brains because our brains can't catch up with that speeding emotion. Yeah. So we've got to be able to take our, we need to give our heart speeding tickets and say, no, you don't get to act that way. No, you're going to have a time out. You know, no, there's going to be a period of time where you're not going to get to talk or express yourself because you are out of control. Be still and know I'm God. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's the answer. Be still and know who's God. Yeah. And it ain't me. Yeah. Yeah, wow. exactly right. <laughs> that helped me so much because, <laughs> because and, and we all have that tendency. Somebody has given a diagnosis. Right. And we lose it. Right. Right. Or, you know, um, your, your two-year-old falls and, and you, you right. can't forget your, you can't remember your husband's cell phone number or, That's right. you, you know, there's a house down the street on fire and you can't think yeah. of where your kids are. I, I remember, <laughs> I remember years ago, Sharon, we're, she was all made up. We were going to do a show over here. Uh-huh. And she said, honey, I, I, I I think you need to call 911. Well, this never comes out of her mouth. And I was oh, in bad shape. <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm going, honey, she goes, and she sits down, and I call 911. And she's sitting on the couch, and you can hear the sirens going. And finally, they get there and do their thing. And the guy's asking me all kinds of questions, insurance questions, or whatever. So I just took my wallet. He was just totally blank. I was totally blank. It, it was the emotion thing. Yes. I you just laid my wallet down. I said, look for it. It's in there someplace. <laughs> right. I mean, I couldn't. If you asked me what my address was, who was the president, I don't think I would have known. That's a perfect example mm -hmm. of what we're trying to yeah. say here. Yes. When your emotions are out of control, when they're unbridled, Principle can't bring them back. Fact can't bring them back. Wow. You got to draw them back in. <laughs> Good story. We Herman. still laugh about yeah. that. Because I could, I could, was sitting right near, I was sitting on the sofa yeah. and he was over the dining room table. Yeah. And I thought to myself, 
He's not going to remember anything. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I was right. You know but, this man but, of yours. Yeah. But, but, but it's, it's yes. amazing when we realize that the Word, that's why we need mm -hmm. to read the Word, memorize the Word, because in those times, it comes back. It does. That's exactly it right. Does. It does. It comes, comes back. back. You know, one of the stories I told in the book was about a young mom, way too busy, president of PTA, working full time, three active children, and she suffered a nervous breakdown, just complete nervous breakdown, was in the hospital on, oh. on drugs for three weeks. And when she started to come back out of that stupor, what came to her mind were the scripture verses she had learned as a little child in Sunday school. And it was the word of God that was in her subconscious that brought her back to a level place in our life. We can never underestimate That's the right. power of the word. You know, if I had discovered a diet that worked for everybody, you'd want it. If I discovered the new drug that was gonna beat every disease, you'd want it. Well, I have discovered a way to live an emotionally healthy life, no matter what your circumstances are. I've got it. Share that with somebody. That's your camera right there. We have about two minutes. It's yeah. it's called the Word of God. And if you are struggling today, if if you are emotionally beat up, if you don't know which way to turn, I want to tell you there is hope and a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. And I'm not talking about religion. I'm not even talking about joining a church, although I hope you do. What I'm talking about is coming to the Father and saying, I need you. I can't do life this side of heaven without your help and your input. Amen. So today, no matter what you're going through, whether it's finances or emotions or your health or a relationship issue, maybe one of your children are struggling. Listen, we care about you and what you're going through. And so I want to pray for you Amen. today. Amen. Jesus, we love you so much. And Father, we pray for every person who's listening. Yeah. Father, we pray that you'd strengthen them with your power and that you'd guide them by the, by the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. Yes. Father, I pray that even as they open the Bible today, they will experience you on every page. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Wow. Amen. That's great. This is your day. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? And we only breezed through the chapters. There's yeah. three parts. But let me tell you, in depth, you will be blessed. Because as I read them, I'm going, mm -hmm. I mean, I, there was area, other areas that I had to highlight because it really, uh, like that particular phrase, I'm going, is she sure? And I'm saying, she's never going to put it in there if she wasn't sure. And you were asked the same thing. Mm -hmm. So get your copy. Right. You then, after you read it, pass it on to a friend because they will love it too. God bless you. Bye-bye.